Hey Stampers, came from stampingimperfection.com. Welcome to my craft room. Let me just see if I can straighten you out a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so I want to play with this Concord and Ninth Grateful for Everything stamp set. It actually has a die cut. It's got a nice, fun script, Grateful for You um, die cut that you can use. And a little background die cut, too, that looks like fun. I haven't played with that yet. Um, I have played with this a little bit. It's very pretty. And, of course, it's got some gorgeous sentiments with different styles of font, which I always love. And then it's got this um, side piece that goes around the edges of this, which also looks like fun. That I haven't played with either, and I'm probably not going to play with that today. Because I just want to play around with some watercolor techniques, and I want to actually use my distress markers. I thought it would be fun to play with these a little bit. Um, I haven't played with them in a while, so I thought I would um, try those. And um, what I'm going to do is I have a piece of watercolor cardstock, and this is just Canson XL cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. And uh, this is cold press paper, and um, I'm going to use this large image. And the image will be actually larger than my card piece, which is fine. And I, I really have been enjoying watercoloring, so I thought it would be fun if I did some kind of watercolor technique. Whoops. Um, with this, just to play around and have some fun and I want it to be quick like I'm so like work is so busy I'm coming home exhausted and I don't feel like I am getting my creative time in so I thought if I make this easier by making it quicker then that might work so I'm just going to tip this onto my um, onto my card watercolor cardstock and it's going to go off a little bit. That's okay. So I'll pick this up like this and then I want to, I think I'm going to start with my, I decided that I want to do, like there's some, in this image if you can see this, there are some uh, like grasses and lots of leaves and then a few floral images. So I thought it would be fun to actually do, um, actually I also want a blue, mm, oh, this one. Um, I thought it would be fun to do the flowers in, uh, I'm gonna, I'm using, I just pulled two colors out. Um, this one is aged mahogany and this one is uh, where is it? Fired brick. So I thought I would do that. And so I'm, I'm going to start with the lighter of the two colors. And again, I want this to be quick. I'm going to use the brush end and I'm just going to put a little bit of color on where it looks like the flowers are. And what I'll do to make this easier is I'm going to keep this in front of me so I can kind of see where the flowers are a little bit. So I'll just color this a little bit. And if I accidentally get a leaf, I don't care. I just want it to be quick. And I'm not coloring in the whole image. Now I'm going to take my Distress Sprayer. I really like this sprayer because I can do a fine mist or I can do big drops. And I'm just going to do a few spritzes and then close it up. And it gives me a pretty effect. So I'm going to wipe this off. And let me see if I have a better rag. I scrubbed a paper towel, but uh, this is better. So I'm going to just wipe it this off with my rag. And then I'm going to take, let's see, that was my lighter color. Was it my lighter color? That seems so dark. Actually, let me take this lighter color. And, nope, that was my lighter color for sure. Let's try 
with a darker one. See what that looks like. Oh, that's definitely more red. Okay, so I'm going to put this on some spots that I didn't get. And I've got some blue here. This one is um, faded jeans. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this on these berries over here because I think just a little punch of blue in a sort of fall color project makes it kind of fun. So I'm going to spritz that and then I'm going to stamp this out. And now I'm going to move on to my, I'm going to just blot this up because that's looking a little like mud. Okay, um, now I'm going to move on to my to my grasses. And I picked actually a few grass colors out. And um, I have tea dye. I picked a darker one, ground espresso. I have crushed olive and wild honey. So I'm going to start with some of the lighter stuff first. Let's start with the yellows and the green. And I'm just going to color in some of this stuff that's sticking up a little bit on both the top and the bottom. And I'll go, I could do one color at a time, I could do two colors. Now notice I'm using the side of the brush end with this. I'm just trying to the spots. And when I add the water, the nice thing about adding the water is that it'll create that watercolor effect. And if you don't have distress markers, you can use, these are dye-based markers, so you can use any kind of dye-based markers. For example, Stampin' Up! markers. I've done this technique with Stampin' Up! markers many times before, and it works pretty well. So I've got that. And you know what? Um, there's always a stage when I'm doing watercolor techniques where it looks kind of icky. Like I always think, ooh, that looks terrible. But um, when you get it done, it ends up being so pretty. All right, so let's see. I feel like I missed some little grass here. Now, this is the tea dye. I want to get just a little bit of brown on top there. And I don't want to cover up the all of what I did, but I do want to get some darker colors. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to take a darker one and add a few spots of the dark. This is the espresso one. Okay. top and again um, if I get what I feel like is too much water in one spot I will I don't hesitate to dab it with a paper towel and pull up some of the water so that um, it takes away some of that color which I like now let me do some of the leaves and I'm going to start with my lighter color and I picked mode lawn so let's get some of these leaves colored in. I'm going to try to get some around the flower here. And if my colors bleed together a little bit, I'm not too worried about that. And I've got a um, darker green. I'm going to add a little bit of that to a couple spots. I'm 
mostly toward the bases of the, the floral images. Or not the florals, excuse me, the leaves. And again, I'm going to spritz it a couple of times. It's very, the um, dye based inks are very reactive with water, and it's so much fun to do a technique like this. Now, I feel like I lost a little of my blue there, so I'm going to go back and I want to add in some small things here. Let's see. A couple of things that I know that I want to do. I want a little bit more green on, let's see, it's this leaf here, so that's over here on the edges. And then same thing over here. On the edges. And I want to go back in and add a little bit more of that blue to the berries. And again, spritz. Now, I could let this dry and then add some details with um, a black marker or even with a watercolor paintbrush and some other colors, but I, I kind of really like the watercolor effect. So now I'm going to let this dry, and I don't actually think this is going to take very long. So what I think I'm going to do is remove this and dry it. Actually, no. I think I'm going to go ahead and do my sentiment. Let's see. I love this grateful for you. Or I am grateful. How about we do that? I'm going to put grateful right here. And then I like the for everything. Maybe I'll do that on Wipe this off a little bit and then put it back on the paper. And check my straightness. Not too bad. Now, I'm going to pull out my, um, let's see, I'm going to pull out, actually, I have this My Favorite Things Extreme Black Hybrid Ink Pad. It should be compatible with both. It's like a multi-purpose craft ink, and it should work with both alcohol inks and with um, my watercolor stuff. So let's try it. So I'm going to ink that up really well. Now this again is watercolor paper, so it's got a texture to it. So for sentiments, sometimes I find I have to do them three or four times. But I love using it, like it, this this misty or your whatever stamp positioner you have. Um, I love using it because it makes it perfect every time and I can stamp over it any number of times. Especially when the sentiment is a little bit bigger, I find that I need to stamp a little bit extra. And I think one more time here will be good. I really like a crisp, dark sentiment. There we go. Good. I'm going to pull this off and set it aside. And I really like the way that's that has come out. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to clean this one off. And this one, I'm, I'm not sure which stamp cleaner I should use for this ink. Let me just try water and see what happens. Actually, that's not too bad. I'll use my, I have a stamp scrubber I'll use later. Okay, now 
I really like this Grateful for Everything. <coughs> or Grateful Heart. That might be pretty too. Grateful for Everything. Or Grateful Heart. Grateful heart. I actually think I like the for everything better. So, all right, so I want to add this, and I'm going to add this with a piece of black cardstock, a strip of black cardstock. So I've got some small pieces here, and I'm going to tuck this way into the corner. And I'm going to put this down in that corner. Like that. Okay, and I'm going to grab my Versamark ink. I'll grab this embossing buddy. So I'm going to do this in white, and I I considered doing this on white paper, but the um, I actually am not sure this is Canson because it is quite um, vanilla in color, so um, that might not be the Canson ink that I thought it or the Canson paper. I had a bunch of pieces cut. I cleaned up my desk yesterday and had a bunch of pieces cut, so. I've been using mostly Canson, but I have tried a couple different um, brands lately. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to close this up and get it out of my way. And then I'm going to heat set this. And a little, a couple of heat setting tricks that I've learned recently. Uh, one is to heat up your heat tool, um, and then the other is to heat it from the bottom, and I really like that technique. So I'm going to heat this up, give it a little bit to heat up, and then I'm going to come from the bottom. The main thing is you want to hold it, even if you heat it from the top, you want to hold it off your craft table because um, if you keep the paper laying on your craft table, you actually ha are like essentially heating the surface of the craft table. And it really does emboss quicker when you hold it off the table. Wipe some of that powder off. And then I'm going to take my little guillotine cutter and put this down I, I like this because I can put this down I it's got a little ledge so I put that down and I don't know how well you can see this and I slide this over I can see the metal edge so I slide this over so the whole thing is hanging off the metal edge. And then I can cut it, and I get a nice clean cut every time. Then I'm going to take my paper snips and make this just the length that I want it. So I can pop this up. And one thing I do have, and I'm, I'm going to trim this pretty close. I've been making longer sentiment strips mostly lately, but I really like um, sometimes having a small little sentiment. Trim that close. And then I've got this quarter inch foam tape that I got, I don't even know where, somewhere on Amazon, I think. 
I thought it would be handy to have some thinner foam tape, and it is, because otherwise you have to cut the larger stuff down. I really like the foam tape because it holds the whole piece up, plus I feel like it's super cost effective. I get it in these huge rolls from an electrical supply company, mostly on Amazon, although I don't know that the smaller one came from the electrical supply company. And I think I want to place this under here. So I've got that. Now one other thing I would really like to do is I would like a little bit of black splash on there. So what I'm going to do is take my Distress, let's see. So I'm going to take this black soot and um, this Distress Oxide black soot and I'm going to just squish some on there. And I'm going to put this aside while I do this and I'm going to spritz it. I really want to get it wet and like it's you can see it beating up and this is, looks like it's going to be pretty gray. Um, and I'm going to take one of my, I really like my larger paintbrush. This is a round paintbrush. This is a size 8 and I'm just really going to like mix this up. And get it super wet so it's holding a lot of super wet paint and I'm just going to dab this. And one thing I know is I don't want the whole thing covered. I sort of like the look of having a few blobs around the sentiment and then a few across the flower. So it's kind of going like this instead of covering all over the whole thing. I feel like I always like the way it looks better when I do that. Okay, so let me clean up this craft table here. So, I decided to put this on a piece of craft cardstock, and this craft cardstock is is um, eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. So now I'm going to take this, and I trimmed an eighth of an inch um, off one edge and one edge here. So I'm going to have a little tiny bit of this craft cardstock border around the edge. Now I want to pull out my larger foam tape and I'm going to bring out my craft scissors to cut this. And um, these dots I made are still a tiny bit wet so I don't want to, ordinarily I would put it on the back here, but I don't want to smudge those dots because I really like the way they come out. They came out. Those may be my favorite dots of all time. So I don't want to mess those up. So I'm going to put this here, but I'm going to make sure to leave a good amount of border around the edges. And then I'm going to put this down. And I'm not sure how much of a border I'm going to have, I want to keep the border even around. So I'm just going to kind of lay it down carefully and not press because I want to have border around all four edges. So I don't want to press it down onto the foam tape until I'm sure I have it placed on the card where I want it. And one final thing that I really want to put on this card, and this may be one thing too much, and that is I love the big clear bubbles. Not the iridescent bubbles, but I have these big clear bubbles from Studio Katia that I think will look really pretty if I put a couple on. And... I use one of these Craftmates containers. I actually found them when um, I was moving in my craft room full of beads and stuff that my daughter had collected um, and used to play with when she was a child. So I confiscated it. And I really only think I want like three of these. So to stick these down, I have my multimedia mat. 
And again, these are Studio Katia. These are her clear bubbles, Studio Katia clear bubbles. And I have this quick stick. It's got the, um, it's almost like clay on the bottom. And I pull this out. It's got a pointy end and like a beveled end. And I just hold my place. And then I take, just pick this up with the um, clay end. And I'm holding this this is from my foam tape. I'm holding that down with my pinky and this has taken a little practice but this is what works best for me. And what I really like about this glue is that it dries clear. Alright, so that is going to complete my card. Let me see if I can shine this light on a little bit. Hopefully I got enough light in the video. And that's going to complete my card. Isn't that pretty? Like those those big splashes of paint really made a difference and I love the watercolor effect and it was super quick to make because I didn't agonize over watercoloring and if I really wanted to fill these in I could actually take a water brush or a paint brush with water and just pull the color into the spaces if I wanted to. I could really drag it in. Or if I wanted to, I could add more details with the watercolor pen and some other colors, or even with um, my favorite liner pen. This is the Copic Multiliner, the 0.3, um, I think it's 0.3 millimeter black, and I could add some details to that if I wanted to, but I don't want to fuss with it. I like the way this came out, so I'm going to stop while I'm happy with it. So thanks for watching. Give this video a like, share with your friends, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel while you're here, and um, stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. I'll put some affiliate links below to link to the um, Concord and Ninth stamp set, and you can find those links on my blog if I forget to leave them below. Thanks so, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate um, your visit today.